Hey, it's Dave from Bullpen Cycles, and this is a 1990 BMW K1. I bought this bike, I looked it up, in 2014. It took me five years to finish it. And in the end, I was so disgusted, I never rode it. I just threw it in the corner of the shop and threw a sheet over it. Today, we ride the BMW. I gotta hand it to BMW. They're a company not afraid to take some risk. Score one for BMW. Fortunately, that's where it ends. Take this bike. I got this bike in 2014. It has 1,600, 510, 16,510 miles on it. It was a one owner bike. This defined, or at least as BMW would have it defined, it defined the sport touring segment. But guess what? No hard luggage. Strike one for BMW. You got soft luggage. And this had soft luggage with it. And soft luggage would strap everywhere on the bike and the straps would rub the paint and break the plastic. I had to go all through this plastic. Here's another thing that happens. It took me one and a half years to get both fender halves from BMW. They tend to crack right here. This bike it's cracked just sitting in the shop that's strike two for bmw another thing i had to go through was these fork tubes because you're whacked back in here people don't wash them and they were all rusted and pitted so i had to replace the fork tubes and fork seals the tubes $400 a piece. That's with my employee discount. That's strike three for BMW. So I took all the body work off after waiting a year and a half for my two fender halves. And I sent it to my body man and he absconded. I had to call the cops. I almost lost the body parts. So it took me another two years to recover my body parts. Yeah, my body parts and have them all repainted. We didn't repaint the tank. I like to keep as much of the bike original as I can. So the tank is original. The glass is either replaced or repaired. So in the meantime, while all my body work is missing, and everything's disassembled. It must be 30 pieces. I'm desperately bleeding my brakes by hand. Trying to keep fresh brake fluid circulating so I don't lose an ABS pump. Because that ABS pump costs as much as your left arm. I did go over the Brake calipers, which you can't see, they're Brembo's. But they're not standard Brembo's. BMW has a special Brembo. It's half a millimeter a different size. So you can't get them anywhere but from BMW. Strike four. 
I'd hate to see what that master cylinder cost, but on my R1200C, it was over 500 bucks. So anyway, my bike is all apart. My body panels are missing. My ABS, I'm trying desperately to save. And I get everything back, and I'm not sure how to put it back together. So I get help from our local BMW dealer. This was in Pennsylvania, so it was Hermes in Port Clinton. Here's a plug for Hermes. Does it make BMW better? Well, less painful. Anyway, they helped get it together, but because it had been sitting for so long, fuel pump went. 1200 bucks from BMW. What is that, strike five? So I hate this bike. I was so disgusted. I threw it in the corner and never looked at it again. I just put a fresh battery in it last week. We're gonna ride this sucker. See if it brings me some joy. The last thing that I haven't done is, you can see where it looks like they scuffed up the rear tire on a tire machine. And I should probably take that rim off and have it powder coated. What I tried to accomplish here was the look of an original bike as much as I could, not over restored, not erasing the history. You tell me if, if I accomplished that. So, let's see if it goes. While I'm on BMWs, let me show you another BMW. Hey, no. This is Gary Nixon's Battle of the Legends BMW. The actual bike that Gary raced in the Battle of the Legends. Come on, Ingen. You gotta be inside. Stay. I think this is from the 94-95 race. If you look, it's still safety wired. Safety wired here. He signed it. All of the Battle of the Legends champions, riders, signed the bike and BMW sent them off to different dealers as part of the promotion. As you know, they stopped the race in 96 after a rider died. Anyway, we're taking this to Arma in Daytona this weekend. It's uh, January 7th and 8th. They're doing basically all the cool vintage races they used to race at Daytona. Um, they're finally coming back to Daytona, but not during bike week. This is uh, in January, and they're gonna have uh, vintage flat tracks on the short track, motocross, and we're gonna do a video of that. So, oh, they got a swap meet too. So if you wanna see that, click subscribe or follow us or just check back. We'll do a video on that. All right, so here we are, folks. The moment I have been dreading for years. <laughs> So if the battery goes dead and the film goes blank, before I get back, someone call an ambulance. Now that warning light is on because the ABS is flashing. And on these, the ABS light should go out once you go for a run and it starts moving. 
Unless there's something wrong. Okay, that's the farthest I've ever driven it. Now I don't know why the light is still on. I'm keeping it running, although I shouldn't have to because it's fuel injected. Oh my gosh, the foot pegs are way back. I wonder why that light's on. That's not necessarily a good thing. Oh, it's tough on the hips. Yeah, I'm not liking the seating position. Oh, okay, as soon as you tap the brake, then the light went off. And they're working. Both of them. And it's idling. Of course it should. It's fuel injected. Drop it in first. Well, it feels like it's going to have some grunt. Just feels big and heavy. Well, that's because it is. I'm coming to a complete stop so I can get my bearings. Drop it in first. Alright, I'm guessing if you spend some time on it, it's... It's actually very smooth, which is a good thing if you've got, get, tend to get numb hands. So we got no issues here. Well, this is a long light, huh? Uh, gas gauge came on. It says third gear. Gear shift indicator, that's sort of cool. Well, okay. It's only five. I get to scratch that off my bucket list. So what I don't like about it is I don't like pushing it because it's heavy. The side stand work, I mean the center stand works pretty good so you don't have to lift it up. The knees are a little bit crouched in the hips when you're sitting on it. Very smooth. Very good power as you would expect from a full liter bike. I 
think this is an industrial park in here. We could go in here. No, it's not an industrial park. Oh. Never been here before. Trail crossing. Oh. Does it do a big circle? Bike is riding fine. But I still hate it. For sale. Keep out. I don't know. Could be like the Primrose Path with no return. I better not go too far because I don't know how much reserve is. I'm going to put this one up on Marketplace. Get rid of it while I still can. I don't know if I should turn around or keep going. This will be a fun bike to turn around. Here, oh, this would be a good sport bike turn. Uh, I'm turning around here. I don't know where the heck this goes. Uh, sand, I won't turn around on his dime. Alright, so I get better with it. I can't say I like it, but it's definitely rideable. It must be an acquired taste. Worst thing I find is Worst thing I find is the seating position here with your knees. Other than that, and it's a little bit of relief when you finally let go. Little bit of shake, but you don't feel that riding. Well, we're done.